We're at Stanleylands Marina, Matthew, and I want to know what is inside your seat box right here. You want to look in your box, don't yes. you, Renda? And by the way, you've just mic'd me up, and I never even knew you'd done it. I was fiddling about with this, making sure it looks tidy, and I'm like, we've got mics on, and they're on already. I'm a ninja, are not I? Yeah, it's a bit scruffy. I get told off a lot that I'm a bit messy and a bit scruffy, so apologies in advance, but it, this is a working box. It's in action all the time. Um, so, let's start with the top compartment. Nothing complicated in here. I've got a little bit of line. If I'm brutally honest, I never use line on the bank. I, all your rigs are done at home. All my hooks are done at home. The only thing I sometimes do is tie up a little boom for feeder fishing, like a thicker bit of line below, below the upland. I'm fishing all craft at the minute, so I use 020 fluorocarbon for that. Um, bit of line in case I need it. And then I've got some right old trinkety boxes in here. I've got one of my nice new ones with some bigger shots in if I need them. It's clean, um, isn't it? It's very clean, that one, isn't it? But then I've got some old turtle shell cases. They've just got things like speed beads and heli swivels and little diamond eye swivels and stuff. Just like if I'm fishing on the Trent or something and I need to mech a rod up on the bank. Got a few bits and bobs in there. Like it. Mr Rooney kills me every time for that because I don't put them in one of them. But the reason is I've had that one for so many years. I just like it as my old fashioned. I've had it since I was younger than you, Brendan. <laughs> it's as old as God's dog, that. Probably older than me. Probably is. A few shots and num these, these are a must in my box. Can't go anywhere without them. I'd stop shaking them before you. Shaking them. Shake your tic tacs at me. <laughs> um, number 13 micro cubes, and I use them for dotting down my floats. Um, I always shot my floats at home to about half a bristle. And I always have three or four of them just above my bulk or just above my top shot. Mm -hmm. um, and they're brilliant because you put one on and it dots it down a little bit or you bite one off and it lets a little bit of bristle show in. So number 13 micro cubes, absolute must. If I opened this box and they weren't in there, I'd pack up <laughs> and go home. A um, few other little bits, some tape, very handy for fishing. Um, if you break a section or you need to tape something together on your box, I've, over the years saved me a few times. Um, I always keep a couple of little mini spirit levels in. I can just level my box up dead easy. I just whack them on. If, if I'm a bit unsure, I just whack them on my foot plate. And Good little idea, that. Yeah, isn't it? and you can put them that way, that way, and then you just throw them back in like that. I've tried gluing them to my box and they just come off, so I just <laughs> leave them in there. Not very handy, man. No, I'm not very good. Um, stopwatch, essential for feeder fishing. Possibly one of the most essential things. In my opinion, I think that's one of the most yeah, essential it, things a bit of kit that you can have Even pole fishing sometimes, I'll say if I'm feeding a line and coming off it to rest it, I'll sometimes feed it, just click my stopwatch on, and I've just got a little reminder there of like, oh, hang on a minute, that's 20 minutes since I fed that. I need to be having a look on it now. So yeah. really handy for a bit of timekeeping. Power gum, um, any brutal feeder fishing, or if you need to tie up some... Um, little booms on feeders or anything, always handy to have a little bit of that in your box. Thought someone were coming then, Bren. This stuff, Sam Wildsmith put me onto this. He sells it in his tackle shop, Mill Tackle. It's not lube. Move, Don't it get called? excited. Muscalin. 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 Um, and it's just grease that you can just dip your float in um, if you don't want it to sink too much or so sometimes i just overshot my float by a number 13 micro cube and just put a tiny dab of this you know these sort of conditions when it's flat calm and you want it almost level with the water um it's basically bristle grease mill tackle sam wildsmith shop that's where i got that one from cheers sam um a few little boxes these have just got bristles for flat float some big olivettes in and some smaller ones as well feeder links um just whenever I go flat float fishing on rivers and stuff, they're the kind of thing that I always forget. You put your stacker in with your flat floats, and I always so that just stays in my box. I, I like never it. want to forget it. Front drawer. That's this one here. Yeah, so I get it out for you. Yeah, this, this, nice, <coughs> this is a bit busier. Plummets and bombs, lots of different bombs and plummets. Everything from, you know, I've got 10 gram little ones for plumbing up on silty bottoms or waggler fishing. 20 and 30 grammers that are probably the most popular ones that I've got. Um, but then a lot of my fishing's done on natural venues and you do need some heavier plummets. I've got 60s and 40s in here for, again, things like rivers that are flowing or flat float fishing or big deep venues where you really need to be accurate, especially if the water's moving and you need your rig to be straight. So various size plummets, a few little plumbing up leads. They're very handy, doing, like I said, doing a bit of feeder fishing at the moment. and. 
finding little beds of gravel. You can just feel things a little bit better um, through your rod with them. And even some big clip-on plummets. My missus has got some things like this in her top drawer, <laughs> you know, Brenda. Um, but they're for nipping onto things like your bottom shot. So if I wanted to plumb up so all my up lengths on the bottom, I can nip that onto the bottom shot, plumb it up, and I'll know I'll be an up length over depth again. More of a rivery style thing, but very handy for flat float fishing. Like it. Punchers, various different punchers, some bigger ones for carping, some traditional Drennan ones for um, bread punch, like we'll be doing a little bit on the canal today. Cheeky little teaser of this. Oh, here this it is. is a new caster banding tool that's it's out you this year. That's got it. You will not believe how effective and good this is. This is a tease. This is probably going to go out as a trailer separate. Yeah. But that is unbelievable. It's something that Andy Bennett um, has sort of come up with and helped us develop. But flipping heck, it's good. Maggots and casters banding never be difficult ever, ever, ever again. You can do it so quickly with that. Oh, um, still... Needles, uh, baiting needles, speed needles. There's a, there's a Stanley knife blade in there. Always very handy to have one of them in case you need to chop a bristle on a float or anything. Um, always keep a Stanley blade in my box. Um, a few pins for up length spools. There's a little bit of silicon. If I need to make a rig up on the bank, I just, I've always got a little bit in there somewhere. This is a messy bit, but I know where everything is. That's it, it's personal, isn't it? Yeah, dental tools, um, shot pliers, hook tire, tip X, very handy for marking stuff up. It's and waiting in your teeth as well, that is Oh it? yeah. This is mine, the yellow is out. And a line marker pen for feeder fishing and also a lot of slider and waggler fishing. I'll mark my line and reel back to the mark on the line. So again, essential bit of kit. Always leave it in because I don't ever want to leave it at home. Various different disgorgers. We've got some little tiny nice ones for canal style fishing. A little bit bigger ones that are also on the end of a loop tyre. I always tie my loops with a loop tyre. Very neat um, then, aren't they? Yeah, very neat, very, very strong, all the same size. I just know that there's a lot of consistency there. Some slam y style um, QM1E disgorgers. My favourite, that one. Yeah, very easy to get the hook out with them. Scissors, <coughs> hook tyre. What hook tyre do you lot use? Comment below how you tie your hooks. Do you do them by hand? Do you mm -hmm. do them with a old-fashioned black matchman? That's you're what doing, I use, one of them. One of these? Yeah. Do you do them with the red Drennan one? I know Denty and a few others do them with a the Drennan. I reckon a train's going to come past in a minute. I just heard it beep. <laughs> um, oh, there's a Stompho one. I mean, let us know. How do you tie your hooks? What, what way do you think um, ties the best knot for hooks? Yeah, um, they wouldn't it? Little Lucky Charm. That, my angling hero is my granddad. And last time I ever saw him, he found this on the floor. And it, it read dead weird, I know. But he was on the floor and he went, um, here you are, put that in your box. It might bring you good luck. And it's not been great, to be honest, Brandon, <laughs> so far. Um, but I always keep that in there. I've got another one oh, here. Nice. Zenya from Angler's Paradise gave me that as a present that when up. I went to visit. She snuck it in my box, and I've never took it out since. So that's in there as well. Oh. Bit of super glue. Always use that. Um, gluing bristles in. If you get a cut, you can super glue it up. Very handy to always have super glue in your box. A few speed stops. There's a thing off a Drennan maggot feeder in there. There's a 20 pence coin. Who's that from? Who you that I from? don't know. I probably found it on the bank and thought I'll buy myself a Freddo with it. <laughs> but then Freddo's are like a pound now. <laughs> yeah, the inflation's gone through the roof. I'm saving it? up for a Freddo. <laughs> um, and that's it, mate, for the front drawer. That's the front drawer. Busy little bit of uh, going on. Like I said, it's messy, but I know where everything is. And then... Last but not least. secret compartments in here. Oh, yeah, little side bits. Yeah, I always keep a pair of sunnies in my box. <coughs> because I hate, I hate it sometimes when you're fishing. Obviously, nice to have your sunglasses in a case in your bag. Mm. But sometimes if I'm fishing, I don't like to stand up and get off my box to get something out of my bag if you're catching. Yeah, so yeah. I always keep a pair of sunnies in there so I can literally just perch my bum up, get them out, and I'm not disturbing my swim, especially on a clear, natural venue sort well, of thing. It is clear, isn't it? If you tape. See, folks, it is the bottom there. Oh, yeah, tape measure. Um, again, OCD kicking in, but um, a lot of my fishing's done on deeper and natural style venues, and things like depth is very, very important. So if ever I want to measure the depth, if I have a really good day, say, I don't know, Gloucester Canal, and 11 foot of water's perfect for skimmers just mm -hmm. coming up the shelf, or I have a good day catching them, and I think, I wonder what depth I caught in. I can just quickly measure it. Good for team fishing. Um, like when we go away with England and stuff, 
when you're trying to relay information to a group of people yeah. about, you know, I've caught in eight foot of water today and I definitely felt it were right, you can measure it and you can have an accurate measurement. So very important, spare needle, a few more flat float bristles in there that won't um, fit in my other box. And then here, I just keep all my pole pots. Oh. Wedge them together like that. I like that, <laughs> I like that idea. <coughs> Excuse me. Setting pots there, like, like how you like towered them all together. Like. Yeah. Got all sort of got little lids cut out and loads of different ones that I've sort of tweaked. A little faffy, you yeah, ain't Yeah, just cut a few up. Like there'll be some that's got holes in and I don't know where they are, but they're in there. That one there looks so it just comes out a bit faster. Oh, yeah. Lots of little trinkets like that in. And that's it, mate. That's a guided tour of Matt Godfrey's seat box. And if anyone would fancy um, lending me the jet wash and a little bit of WD-40 to give it a spruce <laughs> up, because it's looking a bit worn. Look, this, this bit's fallen off it. How long have you no. had this box, though? You must have had that a few years. Oh, it must be years, three though. or four years now. There must be three or four oh, years. You've, you've gave it some serious hammering, It's yeah. spent a lot of time submerged in rivers and lakes and... Yeah. And all sorts of... It's had all kinds of substances spilt on it over the years, <laughs> Brenda. <laughs> Um, but yeah, done me proud. Everything I really need in there, my rigs I take separate. But yeah, I think it's right cool looking in people's boxes. I always remember the old match fishing inside the box of. And I'm always like, oh, what's that quirky little thing? And so yeah, nice to show you what's in mine. Hope you enjoyed it. Yeah, Got any questions? Cool. Fire them in the comments. Tom knows my box inside out, so he can probably reply to you anyway. Um, but yeah, don't forget to um, give it a like.